Hello everyone and welcome to this video where we are going to be taking a look at the work in progress and kind of behind the scenes of what went into building the Alta container ship. So what we're doing here is making sure that this hatchway can open and that our below decks system can accommodate a container properly with the height restrictions that we're applying here. Now as you can see here we have a single container configuration where we're going to have two containers in this bay in total meaning you have one in the front and one in the back and of course the hatch is not open the full length so meaning you have to drop the container in one location and then move the container deeper into the hold somehow so you can drop a second one in. So that's what I'm building here now. It's just going to be this X braced kind of framework that can connect onto a container and drag it deeper into the hold, ensuring uh, the ability to put two containers in this area. Now we do have a good amount of space on the sides and we'll see if later on we can accommodate two containers uh, per area so meaning a total of four but for now let's just see the system working here with a single container configuration now the next part is to lay a track a sl uh, sliding kind of uh, track that will be able to move this container deeper into the hold as it gets sort of deposited through the main hatchway and into this base area now of course disconnecting the frame from the rest of the build and then attaching the bodies to the sliders is sort of the first step that this will take now this system has some drawbacks and the drawbacks that i could think of right now are the height so of course as the hatchway above drops down we have to make sure that it does not impede this uh, X frame slider track and that it in fact allows us to continue to move and place the container deeper in the hold without hitting something without clashing on top of that um, track now very quickly here you can see that as I am making sure that that second bay can accommodate a trailer I'm putting the connectors there on the bottom of the bay and of course we have to extend the sliding track in case we put the, the container somewhere in on the other side as well as if the container is placed uh, before the X frame. And here you could see that we test out the system. So we drop it in and slide it open. So you could see that this is sort of proof of concept of this system working. And this here will be the system sliding the container deeper into the hold now i didn't turn on electricity but once you do you could see that i could push this and it will slide that container deeper into the hold allowing us to drop another container in the area that i'm standing in right here and of course when that one is released and removed from the bay then you can also push this container back into the area where a crane can end up picking it up now this is what I was talking about those clashes so you got to check with the concept that it doesn't hit something and get stuck like right now it's not moving and I don't know if it's because of a phantom physics or because the end here got caught on something so we have to make sure that no matter what the system is reliable because there's nothing that's going to be worse than loading up your ship with cargo and not being able to close the hatch because then of course if you uh go back in if you have to go back and kind of sell your ship and rebuy it again you're going to lose all your cargo it's going to fall to the bottom of the sea so here i just did a little bit of adjustments and you can see that now the system is able to move and we are able to close the hatch so that is proof of a properly working system and it's all kind of in place for us and working the way it should be now Again, what I was talking about earlier is it would be really nice to put more than a total of four containers on the ship. The ship is fast, the ship is spacious, and I do believe that we will be able to have a total of eight containers on the vessel 
with some minor modifications. So I'll be checking to make sure that they can work. Here I am just looking at various weights and it seems that 1,400 is kind of the weight capacity of these containers. So will this ship be able to hold the amount of cargo required without sinking? And now that I've put four on the top deck, I am actually cutting into the walls here, into the ballast tanks of the lower deck to see if it is possible to indeed put four containers on the bottom and four containers on top because if we can get away with a total of eight containers I think it'll be pretty good for a ship this size and then we'll see what other kind of functionality we can add in addition but see I just copy it down to there and physically it'll fit as long as I reduce the size of the ballast tanks a little bit and of course adjust these railings and things so it's a little bit of retrofit to make that hold large enough but of course, even in this configuration, it works properly. Now, phantom physics are a thing. You got to make sure to have the containers properly uh, attached. So just to get a taste of the weight of this many containers, I'm just going on and attaching them directly to the frame of the ship, meaning they're just acting as a part of the body, but giving us at least a representation of the weight required. And you could see it's still sitting up fairly high although we're spilling oil everywhere, but it's sitting up fairly high, meaning that even with a total of eight containers, we seem to be properly functioning and able to hold them. So that is a good sign. I don't really need to put more than eight. Of course you can if you want to stack containers, containers on top of the main deck. The issue with that will be that you will no longer be able to see past the uh, containers. They'll be in your way. And because it is quite a tall and slender uh, ship, it won't really be able to have, um, I don't really want to bring up the bridge, make it higher. So we're just going to stick kind of with the current system that we have here. So now here I am taking a nice cut into the ballast tanks. We're going to actually open up these areas and make sure that we can fit a total of four containers below deck. It's just going to make this cargo ship that much more functional, that much more useful, and it'll be much better in the long run. I make creations and I make them with the intent of them being useful and working properly. So if I'm making a container ship and I know it can fit more containers safely, it's silly not to. So that's kind of what you see here. I'm just distributing the areas and parts that were deep inside that ballast tank and cleaning up the pumps and piping and doing all that stuff to make sure that even though we reduce the size of the ballast tank, that they'll still work properly as ballast tanks. With the base properly expanded, you could see that it will fit two containers side by side and uh, fit a total of four inside the lower hold and then of course a total of four in the upper hold. But you could see that it's a much larger sized area and honestly it looks great. So I'm quite happy with how that turned out. Now there's going to be some logistics and issues here that we'll look into, especially how close these connectors are. Uh, you can see that they're only one block apart in the middle, which is concerning because there's going to be phantom physics working at all times to sort of try to sink our ship, so that won't be too good. But again, I could push it one over to the wall later on, it's not a big deal. And then of course I will want to put a center point for connection, so if you are not holding four containers, but if you're holding two or one, you definitely don't want to put them off to the left or right side. You'll want it sitting dead center in the middle and not causing a weight eccentricity. Now, in addition to that, I do have to make the hatch larger because imagine you have one container on the right hand side and you want to drop in the left hand container. It'll be physically impossible if it is a narrow um, hatchway. So we will have to expand the size of it I'm just here moving it first so it is sitting right over top of the area where the containers will go rather than sitting too far up and then having to reposition it which will just not be great in the long run. Um, of course the tracks and the mechanics and all this stuff has to get updated each time and this is about the 10th iteration that I've done that but with stuff like this and mechanics and I can't imagine when Lord Bison makes his crazy kind of uh, in credit ship and or in credit boat and all this type of stuff like with tons of mechanics 
even this just requires a lot of planning to make sure you're not physically blocked and hitting into something without the ability to move any further. So with all that kind of getting ironed out, the next thing that I'll want to look at is my frame here. Um, after some thinking, I decided that this frame, while it is sort of useful here, we do have to make it slide left and right as well. Because of course, if you end up with a container in the left front of the hold, we got to be able to slide this thing to the back, pull a container into the other side. So that is a little extra bit of mechanics here. Very much needed because if this doesn't work, then we won't be able to get two containers deep into that hold and you're stuck with square one, which is kind of not where we want to be. We want to be able to do it. Now, what I guess I could have done is had one track on each side sliding this thing in, but then that wouldn't work if we have a centrally configured container, meaning if we have one in the center, it would not physically work. So I think having one and having it slide left and right to be able to attach itself onto whatever point it is we're trying to pull here is the most optimal uh, configuration. Now there is some logistics and some issues with having the track down here and that issue may become <laughs> quite clear in a second here and that is if you have this whole track wanting to slide forward yet you have a container in one location, you're physically going to hit into it. So see how wide that is? That does not work. So it took me a second here to realize that that in fact will not work, just looking at these bodies. So then what has to happen is that track has to be reconfigured to the top. It won't work if it's on the bottom because it'll physically hit the container it can only be on top or beneath. If it was in the gas tank, it would work, but it could only be on top if it's inside the chamber. But then it brings us the extra added work of now having to increase the height because the clearance in, th in this bay is not nearly tall enough to allow for this sort of X brace to slide over top of the containers. As you can see, the clearance there is <laughs> not enough. So there is some things like this that come to retrofitting where most people will not see and mo probably will not appreciate the effort it took because they'll see it and think that it's just a rebranded Alta tanker and that it, you know, I added a hatch and some things, but in, for all intents and purposes, this is its own build. Uh, yeah, it uses the hull and it uses the interior, but as far as the mechanisms go for making the crane and making the functionality of the container ship part, it is a full build. And a quite intense one because this may be the most mechanically inclined creation and you'll see in next the next videos because i've already actually filmed them is that we'll get into really the depths of things with regards to the cranes and the automated systems and kind of the controls that are part of this system because this is just scratching the surface this is only kind of the very basic framework that we're only going to get into but again we're adding all these tracks, we're adding all these sliders, and this will now serve as the basis. I'm quite happy with the fact that we expanded the uh, hold to be able to fit four uh, containers rather than two. Because again, even though the ship is quite slender, it still is able to fit four. And it's really a shame to limit it to a total of four containers when we easily could double that and have it have eight. Now these connectors or these sliding tracks on the side, we just got to make sure that the system is optimized and you don't have any clashes because of course, if this door slides down and hits into something, that will not be good. So just cleaning all that up, making sure that the system works properly here before uh, finalizing it and giving it a quick test. So now that the basic framework is done, I'm going to end this video. We're going to continue off in future videos with the continuation of the systems, of the planning and the programming and all that other good stuff. So thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more content, more creations, and as always, happy stormworksing, everyone.